Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. I think it is time to look at some built-in date functions and some date functions that can easily be confused. I'll also teach you how to use modern div as operators. At the end of my books you will find appendixes with functions and one of them contain the date functions. So there you can have a look at the other ones, but the two that are often confused is day of and day of week. We have the functions day of, year of and month of, and what they do is they extract, for example, the day from a date data type. It's important that in the brackets here, you place an argument with a date data type. We could use date the function that will extract today's date, or we could also use input from a user where they in selected a date from a date time picker stored as a t date data type. Day of is going to return an integer result. If we have today's date, so on my computer today is the 5th of September, if I use day of, this will extract for me the 5 from the 5th of September. The range of possible results that day of can produce would be the numbers 1 to 31 as per our calendar. Day of week will now extract for me a number from 1 to 7, indicating as a number which day of the week it is, starting with the 1 as Sunday. So if we look at the 20th of March, that would be day 1, 2, 3, 4. So day of is going to extract the 20 for me for the 20th of March, whereas day of week will take into consideration which year it is and then return the number 1 to 7 of which day of it week it is. Day 7 would be Saturday and day 1 would be Sunday. The answer now of I day of week can now be used with what is actually arrays, great teams, I know you don't know what that is, you'll learn next year, so for now you can call them functions, but you can see they actually make use of square brackets and not round brackets. So long day names are one of those functions that we can use with I day of week. Remember I day of week returns a number from 1 to 7. So should I day of week be a 1, it will now find the word Sunday for me in this array long day names and it will then store Sunday for me in this variable is day. You'll see there's two lines here depending on which Delphi you're using. If you're using Delphi 2010 then you would use this array like this whereas when you're using the newer versions of Delphi, Delphi 10 and 11 then you have to add format settings before the long day name. So just format settings and a dot. So in long day names, all the names of the week are stored from Sunday to Saturday. And each one of them has a position number called an index. The moment we use these square brackets in Delphi, we're referring to some kind of an index, which is really just the position. So in position 1, the word Sunday is stored, and that's how it gets uh, Sunday to store in S day. Whereas if this I day of week is a 7, then Saturday would be stored here, because in position 7, Saturday was stored. There is also a short day names that can be used in the same way as long day names. The only difference is that it gives you the abbreviation of the day of the week. So for example, Monday will just be M-O-N. It is very important that the value that you put inside of the brackets is in the range 1 to 7. I have just made a deliberate mistake on one of my programs, so I can show you what would happen if we enter another value in there that is not in the range of 1 to 7. So I've just set my I day of week variable to an 8 and then I used it there as a I day of week. This is the program you're soon going to write under dates and chars and I'm going to click on date and this is what it crashes with. It's called a range check error. This is a runtime error 
and the specific error is a range check error. Now remember, I, I keep on talking about a range. The range in those square brackets can only be a value from 1 to 7. And I have assigned there I day of week to 8. And then I used it here for short day names. And this is what caused the error. In this case, I often click on break. That often takes you to the correct place where the error is. And then you can click, let me just move it up a little bit. You can then click on the stop button there to reset your program and to correct your mistake. This is again your time to practice. So go back into the program built in functions. In the main menu, dates and chars, there is a sub menu called today. You can try these. I'm going to show you the example of output just now. Here's the example of output, but take note that this program ran on the 30th of September 2018 to calculate the age. You will have to just accommodate for that when you run your program and make sure you're getting the correct age. Try it yourself and press pause. I'll show you the memo soon. The input from the user was from the date time picker and we have a dot date property that is the date that the user selected on the date time picker. We want to store this as a T date data type to enable us to use all these date functions. This is the only input that I have. Now I'm going to extract the day of to date and store it as I day. Then the month using month of and then year of. If these lines of code are indicating that there's an error, you maybe didn't add date utils here to the uses of your program. So scroll up and add that to enable you to use those date functions. Here I'm using years between with date, the D date that the person selected from the date time picker and date the function which is today's date. We have date the function and then we also have the property date, so don't get confused. The advantage of using years between is this would take into consideration whether that birthday has passed today or not. If you calculate the age using year of stored in our year and today's year, which can also be accessed using the current year function, the age calculation could be incorrect. I am now in September. My birthday is in October. Should I now deduct the year of birth from today's year, I'll already be the age that I'll only be in October when it's my birthday. Years between will accommodate for that, that that date of my birthday has not yet passed. I've changed these four lines here since we're using the new Delphi version. So the top one here that I'm first going to explain is the newer versions, the Delphi 10 and 11, and the bottom one here is for 2010, but they're very similar. The only thing that is different is that the new version needs format settings dot. The rest of it is all the same. So to display the abbreviated version of the day of the week, we're using short day names, the array. In the square brackets, I'm putting the fun the variable, the integer variable, called I day of week, which received a value here at the top. So that is a number from 1 to 7, because day of week gives me, of this date that the person selected their birthday, which day of the week were they born on. So was it which number? 1 to 7, either Sunday to Saturday. The, so that would now return the string uh, of the day of the week that they were born in, and I will store that in the string S day week. Another one is S month that I also stored as a string variable because I want to get hold of the month name, but the full month name, so January or February, not the abbreviation. So I'm using long month names, and in the square brackets, this time I'm using this variable here at the top where month of would extract the month of the day the person selected. So if they were born in October, 18 would be stored in there. I will use a 10 here in the square brackets and long month names will now store October in S month. So if you're using Delphi 2010, you'll see 
mine will now, because I'm on the newer version, it gives me an error there. Uh, but your code will just look like this. Similar, same explanation, just without the format settings and the dot. Now, all I have left to do is to display all the values as was asked. Today's date is displayed by using date to string because date the function has a date data type and the rest you have all done before using iday the integer with into string and the string month and the year and so on. Modern div are operators. They are used in the same way as other operators like plus, minus, divide and multiply by putting them in the middle of two numbers. Important that with both modern div, these two numbers has to be integer numbers. Mod will give me the remainder when I divide this number by that number. So if I mod an even number by 2, my answer will be 0 stored in inum. When I take an odd number, mod 2, my remainder then will be 1, and 1 will be stored in inum. Div gives me the number of times that the first number can be divided by the second number without a remainder or decimal places. So it's very similar to using the functions floor and trunk. If I take 20 div 2, my answer is 10. When I take 11 div 2, my answer is 5. See if you can complete the rest of this table. This is your time to practice, so go open that built-in functions program again. Remember, modern dev are not really functions, they are operators, but we're just going to use the same program. Press pause and try this yourself, but make sure that you are using mod and div. We got input here from the user from a spin edit, so we're going to use the dot value property. Value is already integer, so I can store it as i months. I can use the text property of the spin edit, but then I have to string to int it. So by using dot value, I'm saving some coding time and can store it directly as an integer. It was important to store the months as an integer since I wanted to make use of modern div. And modern div needs integers on both sides. So to determine how many years it took, I will take the months div 12 and that will give me the number of years and to determine how many months were remaining I take the original number that was entered I months mod 12 and that would give me the remaining months so then I can display I years and I months in my rich edit with my labels thank you great teens for watching dandelion delphi tutorials remember to do all the other activities under the div and mod menu in our next lesson, we are going to learn how to use global variables. Hope to see you soon!